Now, over five years ago now on this channel, I made a uh, antenna uh, called the uh, Yagi in a can. Basically, a uh, Yagi antenna placed inside a round waveguide like this uh, toilet brush holder here. Now, since I made that video, I have learnt so much more um, about waveguides and uh, Yagis in general. And I think I did even mention in that video all that time ago that I was never that interested in uh, the Yagi antenna as a design. But uh, since then, I've uh, done many more Yagis uh, on the uh, channel and have done a hell of a lot of reading on uh, Yagi antennas in general. I've learnt so much more since then. I thought it'd be nice to do a uh, update to that video because uh, I've learnt so much more and we can make something that uh, performs even better than the, that one did all those years ago. So I'm going to be making uh, two versions of the Yagi in a can. I'm going to be making a uh, longer range one here in a uh, toilet brush uh, holder and I'm going to be making a shorter one as well more of a uh, medium range can uh, in this uh, particular can here that had some potatoes in it but uh, basically this diameter of can which is 80 millimeters 81 millimeters uh, you can find these in the supermarket now for the uh, smaller diameter here we're just going to be using a uh, three element Yagi and uh, for the bigger one we're going to be using a 10 element Yagi. Now as for the diameter of the waveguides for 2.4 gigahertz um, if you look at uh, the papers online and uh, other calculators things like that um, you'll see that it works from uh, around 72 uh, millimeters in diameter the can uh, 72 74 millimeters up to about uh, 110 millimeters in diameter but the sweet spot for a uh, good waveguide like this for 2.4 gigahertz is 80 millimeters in diameter up to just under a hundred millimeters in diameter so this can here is 80 millimeters and uh, these toilet brush holders that I get hold of are anywhere between 90 to say 94 millimeters in diameter and that's the sweet spot you want to aim for this is uh, another can here that uh, has had hot dogs in it and this is 74 millimeters in diameter you can build something uh, like uh, the Yagi and put it in here you can also put a simple monopole just to get make yourself a little cantenna but uh, the diameter does work but when you put this particular can next to a can with an 80 millimeter diameter you instantly see then a big big difference between the two unfortunately this is just on the uh, borderline of uh, the size that you need and as I say 80 is the sweet spot now what you've got to understand about directional antennas is uh, basically with a directional antenna as opposed to an omnidirectional antenna you're taking the same amount of energy that uh, the uh, adapter produces say the uh, Wi-Fi adapter you're scanning with produces around uh, 300 milliwatts of power that's all you've got to play with antennas are not amplifiers but uh, what a directional antenna is doing instead of an omnidirectional it is taking all that uh, power that's being produced by your wi-fi adapter and sending it off in one direction instead of sending it all in a uh, omnidirectional field now the yagi antenna um, is a directional antenna and uh, the difference when you get the gain between the two that have uh, slightly more elements like this one here this one only has three elements uh, basically the gain from this is about 7 db of gain the gain from uh, this bigger one is around 11 db of gain and that's uh, not to say uh, this is magically producing more power out of your uh, you know your little wi-fi card than this one basically what uh, is happening is is this uh, longer one is sending more energy in one direction than uh, this smaller one here so even though this is a directional antenna it has a wider beam width so it's sending it off in a wider 
beam or all that energy that's being produced where this one has a much narrower beam width so it's keeping it tighter sending it off in one direction and because that beam width is narrower it's getting further on the distance that uh, this can travel and uh, work at now what the waveguide does when it comes to a yagi antenna is it will make the beam width a lot narrower so where this small one has quite a wide beam width as soon as we put it inside this waveguide here this can it's going to make that much more narrower so you're going to get more distance out of it and more gain you're basically increasing the gain of this keeping the same size footprint putting it inside the waveguide getting more gain and getting it to go a lot further remember we're not adding energy we're just making better use of the energy that's being used uh, or being made by the uh, wi-fi card and the same thing with this one here even though it does have a uh, narrow beam width it's nowhere near as narrow as uh, the beam width from a waveguide so by putting this uh, which is uh, getting on for a long range Yagi here with uh, the 10 elements inside a waveguide like this one we increase its range increase its gain and we can get better distance now as for the cantenna itself the uh, cantenna design with a single monopole element inside is a little bit of a uh, evolutionary dead end when it comes to antennas yes you can uh, make them longer so you can uh, make uh, the beam width narrower get more distance out of there but um, i have tried over the years to stick many different elements inside of a cantenna to uh, increase its gain from uh, a simple monopole design and i have tried quite a lot of things in the past some i've uh, actually filmed uploaded videos but many many that i've tested here in the lab have just not worked and the only thing that does work to uh, place inside of uh, a waveguide like this to upgrade the cantenna is a simple yagi design like this now i've also tried uh, this driven element uh, with the uh, yagi cantenna and uh, this is one that i built quite recently on this channel um i've incorporated it with the uh, pcb layout here now when i operate this outside of uh, a can it works perfectly it works just as well as it uh, would do if you uh, built this on uh, box tubing like i did on that uh, video but as soon as you put it inside of a can like this it stops working now i'm unsure why that hit is whether it's because of the uh, field that's created with uh, the much bigger uh, element here you know it's a big piece of copper and it's uh, not flat on the pcb whether that field is greater than the uh, waveguide itself so it cuts down and uh, basically limits it i don't know but uh, this does not work inside of a uh, waveguide can like uh, this one so that's why i've gone with the uh, pcb version it just seems to work really well inside of a can so to make the can it's pretty straightforward a lot of what i've done here i've shown in uh, just building uh, normal cantennas um this is uh, a little mount for a tripod and i've got the three angle brackets you've seen me before tapped out for the threads for a uh, tripod mount and basically does a really good job of doing that same on this smaller one here um, you just need to mount it on the inside like I have on this smaller one I've just drizzled epoxy down the sides here just to hold it in place but one thing you really do need to do is ground it to the outside of the can if it's not grounded the waveguide uh, doesn't work as well I mean microwaves do a better job than what you think they do of uh, traveling through uh, metal objects but uh, when you do ground that metal object it uh, reduces the amount of uh, leakage you get from those microwaves so without it it wouldn't uh, work as well you know it wouldn't throw all that energy into that direction I mean even though um, I say throw all that energy you still get front to back ratio you're still going to get energy coming out this way and from the sides but uh, if you don't ground your waveguide you'll just get a lot more of that 
energy escape and it won't work nearly as well so basically uh, you just need to uh, hook it up with some coax which I'll show you in a minute and uh, ground it to the outside of the can on the base so I'm going to solder onto this PCB to insert it into one of the uh, longer wave guides. You can see how I've prepared this here. I've tinned up all around here. I've tinned up the end as well. You can see I've got quite a uh, length there, about uh, 10 millimeters of the outer braid exposed and tinned up because we're going to solder this down onto the PCB board. And this is hopefully going to be enough to stick through the can and we can get some more solder on there. So solder the centre one on first and that will hold it in place and then solder those two little uh, arms that you've made down onto that reflector. Now what I've done, I've mixed up some epoxy here and I'm just going to put it on the sides and just let it dribble down using gravity and that'll just do a good job holding it in place so a little bit on each side and then just let it trickle down now to tidy up uh, this end where the coax feeds in and also add a little bit of strain relief as well I've got a little uh, nylon washer here that's uh, about 8mm uh, deep you can see it's a little plastic round tube there I'm going to pop that over the top of here this is just to finish it off and make it look a little bit neater and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, epoxy in the middle there to hold it all down there we go, a little bit of heat shrink tubing over the top makes a much neater job of it. And to finish the uh, cantenna off, I'm going to block the uh, end off here with some uh, cork. This is uh, three millimeters thick, and I'm going to epoxy this on. Just drizzle epoxy around the edges, tip it upside down on top of the mat, a little bit of weight, leave it for five minutes, and then it's stuck nicely to the end. So here's the uh, longer range Yagi in a can then, on the test setup you've seen me do this before and uh, on the display it's looking quite nice. And here is the output from the uh, larger Yagi in a can. You can see it's jumping up and down a little bit and I think that's uh, because it is a long range uh, antenna. It's, uh, in, it's not suited to uh, do uh, antenna measurements like this indoors but it's not really practical to do them outdoors either. Pretty sure if we uh, were able to hook this up um, outdoors, you wouldn't see it jumping up and down a little bit. It's something I notice when um, I uh, sometimes test some of the longer range antennas, you get a bit of jumping up and down. But you can see it's pretty stable there. I've got it uh, set on 2.45 gigahertz, which is uh, bang in the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum. Got this uh, lovely dip here it's not uh, overly broad in its uh, frequency of operation but uh, for wi-fi it's going to be pretty much bang on so second test then we've got the smaller one this time and just like the bigger one we're getting a very nice output on the network analyzer so this is the smaller one then and again we're getting a very nice frequency response there at 2.45 gigahertz bang in the middle of the wi-fi spectrum I think this one's jumping around even more than the uh, longer range one did but um, I am scanning from 2 gigahertz over here to uh, 3 gigahertz and you can see that frequency response if I uh, stop moving around a little bit it also settles down but uh, I'm really pleased with that there so I think next what we'll do is uh, hook these two antennas up to a couple of alpha cards and uh, do a scan and see what they can pick up in the real world because it's all right looking at these kind of things on a network analyzer but uh, a lot of people just like to know how many access points you can pick up with something like this so let's hook them up and give them a test scan on both of these then i've got the longer range one on the left the uh, smaller one on the right i'll just give them a few seconds to uh, load up and settle down So now that they've uh, loaded up then, you can probably see that the uh, smaller one has picked up a few more access points, uh, you know, when you compare it to the longer range one. 
and uh, that's the difference between a, a you know a directional antenna with a smaller beam width the smaller one's probably picking up a lot more local uh, closer access points where the longer range one is going over the top of them but now they've loaded up together we can see the longer range one does have a lot more access points than the shorter range one and generally when you look at some of these access points uh, you're getting a lot more heavy green with the longer range one than you do with the smaller one so let's compare two access points side by side then that uh, both antennas are picking up and here we can see on the graph the uh, longer range one is uh, about uh, 12 maybe even 15 percent stronger than the uh, shorter range one you also don't have as many uh, dropouts with the longer range one the colors a lot more solid so hopefully you found uh, this uh, video interesting i did at the beginning uh, try to consolidate a bit more at the beginning where as by answering some of the questions that i think that uh, you would have going on the comments of uh, my previous videos so a little bit more explanation in this uh, video rather than concentrating on the build but uh, as i said check out uh, that uh, video i did uh, a couple of weeks ago which will be linked in the description and then you make yourself a yagi and then the rest is uh, pretty straightforward really but uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up comments or questions drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and uh, if you want to support this channel then p please feel free to drop by the uh, patreon page and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one